Hello and welcome to the People Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of November 26th, 2020. To every viewer and subscriber on YouTube, I wish you all a very wonderful and magnificent Thanksgiving. I hope it's been good to you because as long as you're with family and you're happy, it's going to be good to you. And like I said, I wish you all a very wonderful one. But on further news, we have Peter Navarro which is the director of uh, the director of uh, the manufacturing is talking about Trump's last move on China as well as basically um, a little bit about stimulus. And in fact, I got a clip for you right here. I'll be right back. What, I, what I'd love to do for you, Kevin, is is just to talk now a little bit about our bread and butter, which is is the economy. And, and we had a, a bunch of things come out in terms of indicators today and, and over the last week. And for me, I think what's really important and for the people of America is to understand that that we're moving towards what could be a precipice unless we get to uh, a phase four deal. And if I may, let me just tell you the good, bad and the ugly. I mean, if you look at the data, we had an incredible uh, surge in consumption, 40 percent increase in Q2, it's the highest on record. Home sales, both new and existing, are very, very robust. Durable goods is really a bright spot, core capital goods. And the GDP, as you know, comparing that to Great Britain, as you just said, is like we, we had a, a revision and it held at the 33 percent. And then the other good news about it is that the inflation is well below target. But here's the bad and the ugly. Uh, we saw uptick uh, in un, uh, unemployment insurance claims. Uh, we saw personal income go down. Now, both of right. those two things are related to to what I what I describe as a trajectory uh, of 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 money that's been injected through the stimulus and relief package. And clearly, we we're well past that peak. We're moving down into a place where the the PPP program the, and the unemployment compensation. And if you heard what he said. We're having more jobless claims. In fact, we've had our jobless claims have actually gone up two weeks in a row so far, as well as um, how people's personal incomes have are all going down. And he basically rated all this to this CARES Act stimulus money that was passed in April of this year, how it's basically expiring. And then he was also asked to um, if he supports Steven Mnuchin's idea of returning the 400 and in the in the um, interview, the guy says 426 billion, but I think it was actually 455 billion dollars back to the Fed, to, from the Federal Reserve to the um, uh, I don't know where Steve Mnuchin put it, but how if it was a good idea. And in fact, I have him talking to you about that as well. So give us, I'll be right back. Well, do you support our, our, uh, Secretary Mnuchin's decision to, to try to put $426 billion back into a private account from the Federal Reserve? I mean, when so many states, uh, as you know, are red states, blue states are, are calling on there to be immediate assistance. Why not just use the money that's already been allocated? Uh, that's, um, that's for Secretary Mnuchin to have that conversation with you, Kevin. But what I will say that, that I think needs to be done is in the phase four, you've got you've got a number of core things in there. The PPP program, which was the small loan program, was tremendously successful in helping small businesses and it needs a top up. The problem we have, Kevin, is we're losing these small businesses. And what we learned from the crash in 08 and 09 that that once you lose them, uh, it's hard to get them back. So we really need to do that. Uh, we also need to extend uh, unemployment insurance compensation because the, all of that by the end of December, that's that's all gone in terms of the emergency and people are hurting. That's going to hurt consumer spending and the like. Um, so that's necessary. And then we had a really good stimulus with that twelve hundred dollar check per person uh, that went out. And I think that would be what we need is a bridge, a fiscal bridge to the point where the vaccines kick in right. and we're able to get back to a, a semblance uh, of a regular economy. Yes. Having said that, though, is we do have these structural adjustments um, that are going to have tremendous impacts that we're going to have to figure out how to wade through. And that's good. And as you noticed, 
Um, he really didn't answer the question, but he did basically bring up the whole thing about the extended unemployment and the Paytech Protection Plan and a stimulus check. I mean, you may see there, you may see people out there talking about how, wow, we're going to have a second stimulus check. Please don't believe it because that's just clickbait because the Senate is, and Congress is basically out until Monday. So there's really no big changes with them going on lately. So please try to avoid that clickbait out there. And the financial burden on the America fa American's family is, and our economy is planning to basically become a lot worse on December 31st. In fact, they're actually calling this whole thing the perfect storm. Now, how they come up with the perfect storm is beyond me because that doesn't sound like a perfect storm to me because on December 31st, that eviction moratorium from uh, the CDC is going to expire. All the extended unemployment, I mean, since you know how I mean, you said when you get rate of unemployment, they give you 26 weeks. Well, how they expand it to 39 weeks, that's going to expire as well. And plus, as I was also noticed that how basically most states are actually trying to kick in more so you get more money for your unemployment. Well, the federal the government and state the state and government funding that came from the CARES Act is also expiring that day as well. So the money you'd be getting will be a lot less if you're on unemployment. So basically how they can call that a perfect storm is beyond me because that does not sound like a perfect storm. That sounds like hell on earth, should I say, because our politicians are a bunch of idiots and you've got not do their job. <sighs> we have, the funny thing is we have 26 million Americans talking about how their household does not have enough food to feed their families. And they like said, I mean, we have the food banks out there basically, uh, Saying that since that whole uh, Senate unemployment of six hundred dollars a week has expired, how they've actually seen a spike in uh, people going there for food. There's a labor the, the the labor report said that roughly there's sixty seven million Americans that have applied for aid this year. Currently, there's twenty million four hundred and fifty two thousand two hundred thirty three Americans that are on unemployment benefits currently. That is roughly about 40% of America that's on unemployment. And yet our politicians are saying that's a good thing. I don't see how that's a good thing at all. I think that's a very bad thing. Because as you notice, most small businesses are going under because our government's not doing nothing to help them out because most of them have already spent most of their paycheck protection money or PPP money as it is. And they can't seem, they're not able to keep people on labor for, labor force and keep them employed. So basically, small businesses are going out. The only thing that's going to stay open is these massively nameless, these big nameless, faceless companies out there. I'm not going to give names because that wouldn't be right. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Those big faceless companies like Big Pharma. And it's just not good. I mean, because... Why do we want to have all these big companies out there and not have these small companies out there? I mean, that's what they say. Joe Biden's plan was when he goes president to increase the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. That's a good thing. The Republicans are saying that's going to hurt the small businesses because they can't afford $15 an hour. Well, you know what I say about that? We've been at seven twenty-five dollars for how many years for our, our current federal minimum wage? And yet, if these small companies can't afford to pay $15 an hour out to 20 employees, maybe they should actually think about maybe hiring half that force so they can make that, meet that quota until they can actually have enough money to pay all their employees at $15 an hour or more. I mean, this is my idea on that. And, of course, the $15 an hour thing is also Joe Biden's idea as well, so I can't take credit for that. But, I mean, he probably he, he wants a lot of good things for America. I mean, we don't really have much more news on Trump. I'm sure he's enjoying his Thanksgiving with his uh, wife, Melania, and son, Z, and probably daughter. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But um, he's probably enjoying his, his Thanksgiving. We also know all the politicians are, too, because they're sitting in the nice country mansions, eating the nice, lavish meals, 
not giving a rat's ass about the American people out there who are actually starving and don't have the money to buy food or have the food to eat themselves. So when all this comes back around to them, I wish all these um, basically corrupt politicians that to have karma come back and pay them back just as bad as they would make every American that's not rich like them. But these are my opinions. You have to listen to me. The one thing that's all good. We all good about that. But until next time, this is and always will be the People's Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update. You guys have a magnificent Thanksgiving. At least I wish the best for you guys, all of you guys, because I'm struggling myself and it's I'm not really eating a whole lot myself, but I'm still surviving a little bit. But I wish you all the best of a, of a holiday season. And I hope you guys have a magnificent uh, Thanksgiving and you'll well spend it with your families. But until next time, you guys have a wonderful evening and I'll broadcast into you guys either tomorrow or Saturday when more information is available. Until then, wonderful night.